Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking a look at the Laser Pekka 3. But before we get started, roll those credits. So, I have a somewhat sordid history with lasers. I, generally speaking, don't like them. They aren't particularly easy to use. You have to guess the settings half the time. Frankly, I find most of the desktop lasers that we've used up until now to be quite dangerous. They don't have extraction, everything else. This is a different animal. So the ones we've reviewed up until now are laser diodes. This is an infrared laser. This isn't for um, cutting and it isn't for uh, for engraving even in wood. It's actually for engraving in plastic and metal only. It won't work on wood. If you actually look at the live stream that we did, you'll see that it doesn't work on wood, and that's my fault. Um, so this has a relatively small working area compared to the um, ones we've, the lasers we've reviewed before. It's 65 millimeters by 65 millimeters as a square, or uh, 115 by 80 millimeters uh, as a rectangle. It's a lovely little package that comes with um, that comes with its own software. So normally we are fumbling about in the dark with things like uh, Lightburn, but with LaserPecker you have both the app and you also have um, their desktop software as well. You select the material that you are wanting to engrave. Um, it sets all the settings for you. Uh, you can do preview, which will give you a, uh, which will give you an etched out, uh, it will do like a square that will give you um, an etched out view of, of, of the frame of what you're trying to do so you can position everything correctly. And after that, frankly, it just works. Um, so the stand that it comes with, there is a button at the top that you press and a laser will shine, on, two lasers, sorry, will shine onto whatever you're trying to engrave. You then move the laser up or down until those two lasers overlap each other. And that's how you know that your laser is set to the right distance. So super easy to do all of the adjustment there. It does come with a roller um, as part of one of their kits. The roller we're doing a separate video on so you can see how that works. But frankly, we've got it out and it, it just works. So the laser is portable. So I'm just gonna turn this off for a moment so that I can safely move this around without, um, without having to worry about the laser or having to put glasses on for the time being. So this plate in the base comes out and it means that if you want to, you can put it up against different materials and you can engrave directly on them. You can power this with a battery bank rather than having to power it with the um, rather than having to power it with the power supply. Um, and as a result, it's really versatile on the different things you can do there. We have some things that we've engraved that um, that frankly I just thought were were really cool. Invariably it's us at the moment putting our logo onto a lot of different things and seeing how that looks. So let's take a look at what we've gone through already. Okay, so let's start with one of the stock images that's in their, uh, in their little slicer program. So this is obviously a little pug. Um, you can see just how clean that laser is. It's done a really, really nice job there. So this is obviously our logo. Um, so what I will say is the reason for this spacing issue is um, our logo has a blank space next to it here. I haven't cropped it out yet. And that's meant that when I did the frame for this, it was it was supposed to be in the center, but my logo has pushed it off. So it's kind of my fault. This is a little bit dirty, but you can see that this has actually done a really nice job of engraving on this, uh, on this USB hub. So this is an aluminum USB hub, and it's done a really nice job of engraving that. We then have a stainless steel spatula, which has now got the Honey Badger logo in it. That is super, super crisp, really clean, nice and consistent. So when we try to do this on a laser diode, 
Um, it was really inconsistent, liney, like it really wasn't coming out the way we wanted it to, but this did it first time really, really good. This is a super gaudy knife that we have. So uh, this has now got honey badger engraved in the blade there. Again, this is tall steel, but it's tall steel with a paint on top. So it's managed to etch it into that. And then here we have our Green Stuff World Wet Palette, which once again, we've done the Honey Badger logo down there, and then we've done our sticker up here. Really, really cool. Mike's very happy with how this looks. So yeah, so that's some of the engravings. So as you can see, we had slightly varying results. So things like the, uh, the logo that went on this, uh, onto this USB hub, this is not really what it's supposed to be engraving on. This is already very light um, in color, so engraving it is, is, is a bit tricky. Um, but things like this scraper, they just look really cool. Um, it is a little bit fiddly at times to make sure that you get everything framed perfectly. So you can see from our card that we did, that um, because it's not showing you the, it's only showing you the outside frame of what you're, uh, of what you're engraving. So um, if you've got a bit of white space on your logo on the left hand side, like we do, then that means your logo is gonna be off center when you try to uh, do it. That's our logo's fault rather than, uh, rather than the machine, but it was cool to do. Um, we could be engraving business cards and things like that. Those are made of um, acrylic, they're plastic ones. It won't work on paper, obviously. And as we said earlier, it doesn't work on wood either. It does work very well on acrylic. You can obviously see from the wet palette that we showed you that, um, that you can pretty much engrave on, on, on anything, metal or plastic. Um, and it does work really quite quickly. Um, it's not as quick as a fiber laser, but to be clear, it also isn't a fiber laser. So if, if, <laughs> if what you want is fiber laser performance, pay for a fiber laser, which is considerably more expensive. This is really perfect for like jewelry engraving, or it's really good for doing things like sort of customizing sort of, you know, we've got wet palettes or whatever it might be. If it's acrylic or it's metal, it can, it can pretty much engrave in all of that. I will quickly go through the things that it says on their website, it can, uh, it can engrave. So material wise for metals, it's gold, silver, copper, aluminium, titanium, stainless steel, plastic, acrylic. Um, there are a few more um, sort of variants of that. Um, again, I mean, we've obviously, this is obviously stainless steel. Uh, this was an anodized steel. And again, it's done really well on, on, on all of those. The biggest issue you're gonna have is contrast, right? You can't obviously pick the color. So when you're doing on bare metal, it tends to come out black. Um, but when you are anodizing onto something that's been painted, it comes out white, um, which is the same that's happened on these uh, black acrylic cards here. So, um, so it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to see it. So if you would like, if you try to engrave on clear acrylic, um, it, it probably wouldn't work that well and you probably wouldn't see it. So, um, so you would need to try and get a colored acrylic to, uh, for, that to, for that to come out and show. But honestly, it's a well put together package. It is genuinely easy to use. So we got it out of the box, you saw on the live stream, we had a few issues because we didn't realize at the time that an infrared laser doesn't engrave on wood. Um, uh, so we didn't realize that. So we were trying to get it to work on wood and obviously it doesn't. Um, so, uh, but as soon as we started doing, um, as soon as we started using the cards that were included in the kit, um, it worked immediately. Um, it's, as I say, it's, it's very well built. It's obviously a high quality machine. Um, and frankly, it really does what it says on the tin. Um, we have said before multiple times that we have a real issue with normal laser diode lasers. They are moving about quite quickly. Um, they generate quite a lot of smoke. They are burning things after all. Um, but because you're only engraving in metal and, uh, and you're only engraving in acrylic, there's actually no smell. There's no, there's no smoke, there's nothing. Um, I was really surprised at how easy their software is to use. It's constantly getting updates, which whilst good, 
it can be a little frustrating. I'd like to see their program to be a little bit more stable, um, but they're constantly adding new materials, new settings and everything else. You can tweak some of the sliders yourself if you feel you need to, um, but generally the settings that they've given us out of the box has been everything I've needed it to be. Like I haven't needed to play about with those settings a lot. Um, again, you're not cutting with this, you are engraving with it. So even the metals and things like that, you're, you're not cutting. Uh, you, are, you are engraving the things that you, uh, that you, that you find. But um, yeah, I really can't fault it. Like it does what it says on the tin. It's easy to use. The results really are super, super clean. It says it does 1K, 2K and 4K. Now I'm assuming there's some sort of resolution that they're aligning that to. I don't know what that is. Everything that we did here was done in um, 4K. Don't really know why you'd want less image quality. Um, I assume it sort of maybe messes with the crispness of it a little bit. Um, it certainly doesn't seem to change the speed. So it's worked really, really well out of the box. The software is easy to get to know. Um, I suspect it would take a little while to sort of become a master in it where you can do sort of fancy tips and tricks in it. But once you've, the, the benefit of this is once you've done one, you can use, there's, um, there's some, uh, the, the perforations in this build plate mean that you can use some clamps that come with it to actually clamp your thing into that space. And it then means that you can place cards in exactly the same place every time. So you can get a real production line going. It's perfect for somebody who is engraving things as part of, say, an Etsy business or as a craft fair business or something like that. Um, I found it a lot cleaner, a lot crisper, and a lot easier to use than the laser diode lasers we've used before. Um, I don't really know what else I can say about it. Um, as I say, it, it really, really does. It really does what it says in the box. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed. I've really enjoyed playing with it. It's actually something that we're going to send on to um, another one of our another one of our friends because he's got some really cool stuff that he wants to do. It doesn't necessarily sit inside of our workflow amazingly. So um, so it's going to go off to 3DP UK, who I highly encourage you go and check out, and he'll be producing some content on it as well. So price wise, um, the Laser Pekka Three. In this configuration, where we've also got the roller, is uh, is currently one thousand one hundred and twenty three pounds. This isn't a oh, I'm bored on a Tuesday afternoon. Why don't I get a laser kind of thing? This is a I have a specific use case. I know the materials and the size that I need to be able to do. This fulfills that brief, and it does its job really, really well. Um, it's not. A toy and I want to be very clear about that it's a class 4 laser product right there are some countries where you can't even import some of these um, it is it is a it is a very serious piece of kit you do still need to wear eye protection with it even though um, even though the laser is firing straight down and it's an engraving laser you do still need to wear your um, glasses because lasers are dangerous um, but outside of that I genuinely do recommend it if, you're, if, if what you're looking for is something that can engrave metal and plastic at pace with high quality results, this is a really tantalizing example of what you can and can't do. Um, we've done metal engraving with laser diodes before, but they are only just coming onto the market. And frankly, the quality that came out of those really wasn't as good as the quality that came out of this. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the laser pecker. Um, I would give it a solid eight and a half out of 10. And the only reason why I'm saying eight and a half out of 10, because this is built really well, it's obviously a high quality machine. The only reason we're saying eight and a half out of 10 is I do wish the build volume was just that little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger. I don't want another 400 by 400 laser. That's not what I'm asking for but I do wish it was just a little bit bigger. And I feel like if the laser was just a touch more powerful, they could make the, uh, they could make the Z axis slightly higher, and that would mean that you could get a slightly bigger base. Um, I'd really like to see that. Stay tuned to the channel, because there is a laser Pekka 4 that's coming out, um, and that actually has both an infrared and a fiber laser, um, and that could be something 
really special. So, um, but if all you need to do is acrylic and metal, honestly, I, there's not many packages out there at the moment that are doing much better than this. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's the laser. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out 3DP UK. We'll be getting this laser next and check out some of the projects.